If the universe is infinite and has existed for billions of years, then where are all the aliens? This simple question resulted in a paradox that all science enthusiasts on the planet have been discussing for a hundred years. Every year, there is a new, revolutionary solution to the paradox of the absence of alien activity traces. Crazy concepts are proposed, scientific theories are built, and thousands of videos are produced. But the answer to the Fermi paradox was given back in 1933, even before Enrico Fermi himself announced this paradox. The answer is, in a nutshell, Australia. To find out the details, let's go to 1933 and introduce Konstantin Tsiolkovsky. The self-taught scientist was born in 1857 and devoted most of his life to laying the foundation of theoretical astronautics, satellites, ballistic missiles, interplanetary research, and everything we now see around theoretically promoted to the masses, Tsiolkovsky. He was the first in the world to build a centrifuge by increasing the weight of a cockroach in it by 300 times and proving that space exploration would not cause harm to man. It is no wonder that the largest conference room in SpaceX is named after him. In the context of the Fermi paradox, Tsiolkovsky is interesting to us because he is the real author of the paradox. Are we the only intelligent and technologically advanced civilization in the universe? Enrico Fermi asked this famous question in the summer of 1950 in the cafeteria of the Los Alamos laboratory. The paradox was named after him. However, Tsiolkovsky asked it 17 years earlier. In 1933, two years before his death, Constantine wrote a philosophical note to which few people paid attention. It was published under the title, The Planets Are Inhabited by Living Beings, much later. Tsiolkovsky analyzed in the note the same question that Enrico Fermi would later ask. Moreover, he gave a completely logical, scientifically sound, and relevant answer. First, Tsiolkovsky made out the obvious. His article begins with, it is absolutely impossible to doubt the population of countless planets. The arguments are reinforced concretely. Tsiolkovsky reminds us that all celestial bodies respect the laws of gravity, the behavior of light, gases, and other physical parameters. That is, the planets of other systems differ from the Earth not qualitatively, but only quantitatively. They can be of a different size, with denser atmospheres, long or short days, and so on. But qualitatively, the laws of physics apply everywhere. And why should we believe that the emergence of life is some unique process for the Earth? Tsiolkovsky logically hints that hundreds of thousands of chemical processes in the entire universe proceed according to the same laws. Given the huge number of planets, somewhere they will lead to the presence of living beings. The only question is when and where it will happen. After that, Tsiolkovsky moves on to solve the Fermi paradox. The universe is billions of years old, and many believe that aliens must have left some traces. This is where Australia comes into play. In the article, Tsiolkovsky gives a philosophical answer. Australian Aborigines have lived in isolation for tens of thousands of years. Were they right to say that there is no life outside of Australia because they have no proof? Of course, no. The philosophical calculation of Tsiolkovsky can be applied to Europe which also did not suspect the presence of America on Earth for tens of thousands of years. It's not about prehistoric people. In the 14th century, gunpowder existed, unguided surface-to-ground rockets, air communication between troops, and printing presses. And yet these advanced people did not know about the existence of America, which is literally a couple of thousand kilometers across the ocean. It is possible to supplement the calculations with scientific data. Australia was inhabited by Homo sapiens some 65,000 years ago. They were in isolation for 60,000 years. Only about 5,000 years ago on the continent, the first settlers who gave the Australian Aborigines a modern look arrived. The official colonization of the continent began in the 18th century. Thousands of years passed before Australians learned about the presence of civilizations on other continents. Why should we, making the first timid steps in space exploration, think that we can conclude the existence of alien civilizations. We've even taken pictures of Neptune, which is in the backyard by cosmic standards, only three times. It's as if ancient Australians sailed a boat 100 meters off the coast, explored a tiny island, turned around, and said nothing was of interest. It is arrogant to say that our level of technology is sufficient to detect extraterrestrial civilizations. From the point of view of history, 
It is more correct to say that we are not yet strong enough. It is possible to apply Tsiolkovsky's words in a different context. Let's assume that aliens visited Earth 10,000 years ago. Even by the standards of humanity, this is not that long ago. If we imagine the lifespan of Homo sapiens as 24 hours, then it turns out that our hypothetical aliens were on Earth just an hour ago. Would we be able to find any evidence? Of course not. We have successfully lost all knowledge of the writing of the Minoan civilization, which in such a system of account lived 10 minutes ago from you and me. The Sumerians, Assyrians, Akkadians, and other civilizations are a little older and are a mystery to us altogether. Nevertheless, archaeological discoveries are more interesting every year. On June 6, 2022, in Israel, a 3,500-year-old inscription on a clay board was found. It is 400 years older than the oldest of the officially recognized alphabets. There is no doubt that in the coming years, the date of the writing will be shifted a couple of thousand years into the past. What if somewhere out there are inscriptions about aliens visiting the Earth? Theoretically, it is possible. Well, for us, it is important that we cannot talk not only about space, but even about our native Earth in the context of the absence of alien visits. Reliably, we know the history of the Earth for a thousand or two years in the past. This is less than a percent of the lifetime of Homo sapiens. This is not even a speck of dust if we talk about the Earth. No. We do not claim that the Anukai built the Egyptian pyramids and the Proto-Nordic Jedi built the Great Wall. We're just talking dry facts. We only know about a tiny moment in human history. From the point of view of science, we cannot say there is no evidence of the alien's presence on Earth. Of course, one can recall Russell's teapot and note that the absence of evidence does not make the theory true. But Tsiolkovsky has another argument in this regard. This is the theory of the zoo famous in narrow circles. It is based on the fact that we do not visit wild bears, gorillas, or snakes. This is nonsense because we simply have nothing to talk about. If such a stratification exists among organisms within the tiny Earth, then why shouldn't it occur within the limits of the infinite universe? It is impossible to exclude the option they know about us, but they simply do not understand why they should talk to us. On Earth, we isolate endangered cheetahs in reserves, so their civilization does not end. By the standards of space, it is possible that we are a fragile small civilization that is simply of no interest to anyone. Often in response to this theory, you can hear a question, but where are the super civilizations because they use too much energy to hide? If some kind of advanced civilization uses the energy of its sun, then it is easy to notice because the star's luminosity in the optical range will be weaker and in the infrared stronger. In theory, modern telescopes are enough for this task. However, we also do not see any signs of such strange behavior of stars. Sounds logical. But this theory does not stand up to the test of facts. Where did we get the idea that advanced civilizations use enormous amounts of energy? We took this from the reasoning of modern physicists about the exponentially growing energy consumption of humanity due to the increase in the number of inhabitants. But if you look at reality, the picture is a little different. In 1970, the U.S. consumed 18 trillion kilowatt hours of energy per year, with a population of 200 million. In 2020, it was 24 trillion, with a population of 330 million, and crazy technological advances. There are more people now, everyone has a dozen gadgets, and for some reason, less energy is consumed. The situation is painfully similar to the agricultural sector. In 1970, there were two hectares of agricultural land per capita in the United States. In 2020, it was just over one. Are we eating less? Of course not. We're eating better than ever. The answer to the riddle is the same as in the case of energy. As humanity evolves, the efficiency of both devices and output increases. Nothing is growing exponentially. We have better reactors and more efficient farms, and that's the trend so far. Moreover, we don't expect to have a problem with overpopulation in the foreseeable future either. Instead, all available data indicate that the higher people's standard of living, the fewer children they have. Consequently, it is more logical to assume that the almighty aliens will be few rather than many, and the energy they would rather take discreetly but wildly efficiently. This, of course, is only a theory. But it has no less right to live than the theories about Dyson Spheres. The absence of this is said to be the cause of the Fermi Paradox. Tsiolkovsky doesn't go into such details. 
But he also reminds us in his article that we cannot talk about the absence of alien signals. We have no idea what kind of signals they could be. For example, a highly advanced civilization could theoretically blow up the star SN1987A observed on Earth in 1987 for fun. How can we distinguish between natural and artificial processes in space? Scientists do not yet have an answer. Consequently, it is impossible to claim that we have not seen traces of alien activity. To summarize, Tsiolkovsky, in his response to Fermi's paradox, asks everyone to look in the mirror. We humans kill each other, fight wars, and abuse animals. How do we relate to creatures foreign to us and not consider them rivals? The scientists' words answer all questions, including Fermi's paradox. On the one hand, it is too arrogant to think that we have enough information on hand to conclude the presence or absence of aliens. On the other hand, we can't even solve the problems on Earth. So for now, it's worth focusing on these issues. See you later, friends.